Some sail kits that are larger require a sewn-in ring and eyelet. We'll use that at each corner and the reef points. Okay, we're going to install the, the sewn ring. And what I like to do here is I like to have a rounded off corner, so I just kind of give it about a, a quarter inch or so of space. They have a nice corner and you come up about a quarter inch in from the edge, 3 16 quarter inch. Then you want to draw an inner circle and a little bit smaller than the inner diameter of the ring, so you just hold your pencil at an angle like this. And angle it in. Because this will give it room for the threads to be in there. And then we also want to draw around the outer side and hold your pencil straight up and down for this, which will make it about a little bit bigger than the outer part of the ring. Next, we'll be punching a hole. You could use a razor blade if you don't have a hole cutter. Yeah, I just grabbed a hole cutter off the shelf. It's not uh, quite the right size, but it's a little bit smaller, and that's all I'm worried about. So I'm going to just match up the outer edge and just cut around the outer edge. If you're using a razor blade, create an X in the hole, then cut off the four corners of the X with the razor blade. You can see here that Jeff is using a hole cutter that's a little bit small and he's just offsetting it and cutting off the portions that still need to be removed. Once the hole's cut, we want to go, and you can check the hole, make sure this ring fits through it. Doesn't, it shouldn't be super tight, um, or the eyelet I should say. Um, then we want to go mark. I like to pre-mark this so I can put holes uh, use a scratch all and I'll put holes. You could use a, a like a sharpened ice pick or something um, to uh, pre-punch your holes and make the hand sewing a lot easier. But you mark about every eighth inch or a hair less than an eighth inch. And you just put marks on here. Jeff's going to use an awl right. to pre-punch the holes. By pre-punching holes like this all around the perimeter, you'll find it much easier to sew the ring in place with the pre-wax twine. If you order a finished sail from our loft, we would use the Ruckinson ring. Jeff's going to explain it here. That's what all these holes go for. It's just like the teeth on this ring. This is a hydraulic press ring. And um, we're going to be doing a hand-sewn ring. But the strength comes from the penetrations and the grip of the fabric so it loads up on the patches correctly. But that's what we're doing, we're just mimicking the hydraulic ring. Just we can do it without hydraulics. Installing a Ruckinson ring like this takes a hydraulic press and special die. So we're gonna do the sewing in ring and, and the eyelet. Things. The eyelet will still require a die set, but it's not nearly as expensive. Jeff is using the pre-wax twine and a hand needle and then penetrates one of the holes, doesn't matter which one he starts with. I don't really need the ring at this point, I just want to get make sure I have enough twine. Last thing you want to really have to do is start halfway through it the new set of wax twine because you didn't leave enough on here. We want to leave some wax twine, a wax twine tail. Uh, you can leave it about three quarters of an inch. This is a little bit long, but a little bit less. But somewhere around three quarters of an inch to an inch. And what that will do when we come around, it will will loop that underneath the other stitch, and we'll get something that holds fast. Again, I'm not really pulling that tight just at the moment, just so I can get another stitch in here to make sure I don't pull the tail through. And this will start to hold. You can see it gripping that. Now we can start to pull a little bit tighter as we go. That's right. And get it through. Oh, 
You can use a pair of pliers if you need a needle nose, it usually works well to grip it and pull. Sit up on there. Should have been watching that, but that allows a little bit of correction here. Want the ring to sit there, and we're going to be pulling the fabric really tight right around it. So if you get where you push the ring down by by forcing it, you just you know, pull on this while you're moving the ring, and you can reposition it. Now, once we get a little bit further, you won't be able to do much of that at all because it will be tight. I was just adding the finishing touches to the sail. A little drop of blood here. I always want to bleed on your sail because it, <laughs> it shows uh, that you really care about your project. <laughs> Jeff is obviously joking here, but uh, sometimes it can't be avoided. Notice he's also using needle nose pliers to help. Oh, I just go like you know, get it and make sure it's in there, not in here. It could slip and I just. sure you keep the knots kind of clear from the bottom and as you went around the whole thing it gets kind of twisted so sometimes if you're trying to pull through and nothing's getting tight on this side and it's staying loose it's usually because you have a it twisted up like this and that is pulled right into the hole and it won't go through so make sure you untwist it and it will pull tight this ring is now sewn in place we just need to bury our tail we're just going to bury the tail This is always a bit tricky. Again, the key with the hand needles is not to try and push it through so fast. Just put pressure and let it work and it will go through. Okay, now that we got the ring sewn in, we want to take our eyelet, uh, which will protect the protect the uh, sewn ring and the hand stitching from the chafe of a line or a shackle. And we're going to come in, put the eyelet up through, in this case, the bottom, or the ring was sitting on the opposite side of the sail, sitting up here. And just put that down in here on the die set. And you get that settled. Now I place an extra ring on here, uh, and this just helps the uh, base of the eyelet get set before the top starts to flare, and it will seat the ring much better and make a much smoother set. So you just, we're with the two rings in place, we're not going to set and keep it there, but we want to hit it twice. Pop that ring off, and then we can close it up. When using die sets, it's a good idea to do it on a hard surface. You see that steel pad? If you don't have that, do it on a cement surface. And you don't have to get these too closed. Um, uh, probably what I would say is some of the common mistakes is oversetting the rings. Um, 
So you just want to close it down. Better to hit it uh, a few times, maybe five or six times, a little bit lighter and having to keep check than to hit it way too hard like a couple times and then blow apart your stitching because then you just start over. And you have to get have to get a couple eyelets from us to start again. And that's kind of a pain after you spend a nice work to make a nice hand stitched ring to just destroy it by hitting the mallet too hard. And you can do this with a hot knife or a blow torch and a butter knife, but I'm gonna just cut that little circle because I don't like that point sitting there. It just doesn't hurt anything, but it just doesn't look Smaller good. sails do not require these sewn ring and eyelets. They just require a spur grommet. You would obviously put one of these sewn ring and eyelets in larger sails at each corner and reef points. That's all set. 